The United Nations has launched its biggest ever aid appeal for a single country. It's asking for $5 billion this year for Afghanistan to avert a humanitarian catastrophe and offer the war-ravaged country a future after decades of suffering. $4.4 billion of that money will go directly into Afghanistan, where 22 million people need immediate relief. And $600 million will support Afghans who have fled the country. The money will go specifically to 160 NGOs and UN agencies. Some of it will pay for healthcare workers, teachers and other frontline staff, but not through the Taliban administration. More than half the country needs food aid and more than a million children are at risk of severe malnutrition. The UN says its goal is to stabilise Afghanistan and prevent a further flood of migrants across the country's borders. It says that if this year's efforts aren't successful, it will double its plea next year. What we will see is distress at the family level, deaths at the family level, hunger, which, is, which makes people lose hope, movement, further displacement, external displacement, even more difficult than internal displacement. And most particularly, if I may say so, robbing the people of Afghanistan in a hope that their country will be their home and support now and in the near term. Torek Farhadi is a former advisor to the Afghan government and former economic advisor to the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank. He joins us now from Geneva. Welcome back to the program, Torek. So $5 billion for Afghanistan, the biggest ever appeal for aid that the UN has made for a single country. If the UN does manage to raise that money, where in Afghanistan should it go to? What are the country's most pressing needs? Uh, Oscar, the needs uh, are all over the country, uh, as it has been. Uh, Afghanistan has been a country under uh, the serum of development uh, aid uh, for the last uh, 20 years, if not more. Uh, but the new phenomenon is that there is poverty now inside the big cities, uh, Kabul with 6 million population and uh, other big cities. Uh, you have large families, uh, parents who are not working or can't find work because of a quasi-collapse of the private sector, uh, because of the sanctions, because most of the investors, um, Afghan investors, have left the country, uh, not knowing uh, if their money will be safe with, uh, with the uncertainty, the political uh, uncertainty. And uh, uh, women uh, uh, not working because of the Taliban restrictions. Um, uh, there, is, uh, there is lack of job opportunities for young people, for mid-level people. And this is what has really accelerated the crisis and the winter. That's right. Certainly a lot of problems in Afghanistan itself. Now, the UN says none of the money raised will go directly to the Taliban. Instead, it'll be given to its own UN agencies plus other NGOs. Can that actually be guaranteed, though? Are you confident that the Taliban won't get its hands on the money? Well, it's possible uh, for this to work like this. Uh, as this is a requirement of the United States and some of the money that will be raised and spent in Afghanistan will be U.S. money, but through the U.N. so that the U.S. itself cannot, uh, doesn't get in trouble with its own sanctions and laws by helping the Taliban. So they, they put it through the U.N., but the U.N. will have to certify that the money went to the needy people and not to the government. But certainly the government benefits from the fact that help arrives from somewhere and uh, they will, uh, the Taliban will do public declaration that we have been able to attract uh, humanitarian aid to, to Afghanistan. So this is how they will benefit from it. The people will, will see this as, as a positive for the government. Uh, the problem is that this money will go to uh, many UN agencies who have overlapping operations with each other. This has been a chronic UN problem and not only in Afghanistan, but in other places. And with this overlap, some of the money might um, be spent not really directly to the, to the needs of the people. The NGOs, uh, the 160 uh, NGOs, which are much necessary, they also will do 
overlapping work with, uh, okay. with what the UN wants to do and others. Uh, and Torek, as you and I have discussed before, Washington has frozen almost $10 billion of uh, Afghan funds that it currently ho holds across the United States. We know the Taliban has been calling for Washington to release those funds. Is the US doing the right thing by withholding this money from the Taliban rulers? The US should find creative ways to release tranches of money uh, to jumpstart the Afghan economy and also creative ways to do it without the, it going through the Taliban. But the better solution is to really arrive at some uh, political peace with the Taliban. After all, it is the U.S. who signed the contract with the Taliban on February 29, 2019, uh, to come out of Afghanistan. And uh, they finally came out of Afghanistan, and now uh, they are sanctioning the Taliban. So there has to be more political negotiations between the U.S. and the Taliban. It's sort of timid now. The U.S. wants to forget Afghanistan altogether because it makes for bad uh, pictures on the TV screen for the Biden administration. And also, the U.N. is completely absent from the political negotiations. The U.N. Secretary General had appointed an envoy uh, for political negotiations, and the U.N. has completely given up on yes. political negotiations with the Taliban. Okay, Torek Farhadi, we will have to leave it there, but really good to get your analysis as always. Thank you for that.